Behold, the forbidden technology, at least forbidden by the US State Department. I mean, that's, that's a pretty big deal though. It's just like Homer's forbidden donut, except I don't think you have to sell your soul to get access to this technology so you can poke around with it and see what it's all about. Inside of both of these systems are Hygon microprocessors. They're x86 compatible processors, but they're manufactured in China. They have some important differences, but they are CPUs where AMD licensed intellectual property for the original Zen core to the Chinese Academy of Sciences and some other private Chinese companies, Chinese entities in a joint venture so that they could produce basically a Chinese microprocessor. Now, you know, China, is no doubt worried that the CPU has been compromised in some way that might make it possible to steal state secrets. I'm talking about like the original AMD Epic CPU. And that wouldn't be unprecedented. I mean, the US intelligence service really seems to have uh, owned gold themselves pretty hard with that whole dual elliptic curve debacle thing that led to among other things, the OPM hack. So. China wanting to have their own processor produced domestically, you know, that kind of makes sense. I could kind of see that, especially after that whole OPM hack thing. This is actually pretty big stuff and I'm kind of busy. So I pinged Dr. Ian Cutris of Anantec to uh, ask if he wanted the scoop and also to help me investigate these things. Now he did an awesome write up over on Anantec about this hardware and RD Rand is enabled it is, when it is enabled, it is slower than RD RAND on the equivalent Zen. So RD RAND has been tweaked, if nothing else. And you can also disable it completely. So there's a lot more interesting stuff in his write up. And it's really, honestly, very fascinating. So we're looking for interesting stuff that's undocumented in these. And he found a lot of stuff. Remember the FMA4 instructions, the video that I did on that? Yeah, I mean, stuff like that, basically. But in the uh, in the Hygon processors. The other interesting hardware aspect of this system was that it worked, This the little system, was that it worked with any ECC memory. Registered, unregistered, uh, just regular old DDR4, like gaming RAM, burnt potato, it didn't care. You could put pretty much anything in it and it would boot up and run and be fine. The IPMI, the BIOS, all of the other peripherals on the motherboard, American Megatrends. There's a lot of American intellectual property in this motherboard. This is not really as much of a homegrown Chinese venture as you might have been led to believe if you read the headlines. So the Chinese plus AMD, it's the Chinese US joint venture that actually made these CPUs, the Hygon CPUs, was announced by AMD in 2016. And the first CPU was released in 2018 and at Computex 2019, AMD CEO Lisa Su confirmed that these would be limited to the original Zen architecture and not be extended to Zen 2. So that is what they were talking about physically, the hardware in my hands. Now on June 24th, 2019, the US government placed uh, that joint venture on the naughty list, on the export control entity list is what that's called, which bans further technology transfers from AMD and possibly interferes with the existing operations of Sugon, the company that made this uh, chassis and pretty much the whole server and the motherboard that you see in our lovely uh, fractal meshify case. Now, I'm sure that the government fears some kind of invisible specter in these CPUs because it's the forbidden technology. Let's poke at it. So these are the specimens that I've procured. Uh, let's just say I've I've borrowed them for, for now and thank you Lone E, you are the real MVP for letting me take a crack at these systems. Now, are, these are two systems. The smaller one here, I call Miss High Gone. So let's take a look. This is the closest thing to an eight core Epic embedded that I think is probably the best way to describe it. I mean, it looks an awful lot like what you would recognize as AM4, except it's not. And it's also soldered to the motherboard. And it also has at least 32 PCI Express lanes coming out of this AM4-ish CPU. The motherboard is a standard micro ATX motherboard and everything works. Although CPU Z sort of struggles with recognizing what's going on here a little bit. So the performance is on par with the first gen Zen, although the fastest clock speed that I saw was around 3.7 
1.7 gigahertz. And the average clock speed, I would say, was a more pedestrian 3.2-ish, 3.3 gigahertz, something like that. But the performance is not bad. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty good for what we're working with here in terms of like the original Zen Core. Now, 32 PCIe lanes, I mean, that doesn't seem right, but it's got loads of diagnostic readouts and some other interesting options, such as disabling RD RAND and RD Seed in the UEFI. Those are the instructions that have to do with random number generation. Now, it's funny because uh, RD Seed and RD RAND have to do with in, uh, random number generation, and, and you see it used with encryption. So, yeah, I mean, encryption and random number generation was sort of at the heart of the aforementioned uh, own goal, you know, dual elliptic curve thing. Hmm. Now for our larger system, I've named it Hygon Gen. These are the C86 CPUs. They're the really high end 32 core. So this is a 64 core, 128 thread monster. The performance is a little worse than first gen AMD Epic. Honestly, this chassis is kind of completely ordinary and boring. It's, I mean, but I mean that in a good way. There's not really a lot special that's going on here. The RAM is standard, the bus interface is standard, the RAID card, good old fashioned LSI slash Avago. I mean, there's not really anything to write home about except the CPU support. I mean, these are nowhere near as fast as Zen 2. I mean, they're not even as fast as like the original Zen because they're clocked just a little bit slower, or at least they seem to be for the, the testing that I'm doing here. So Zen 2 CPUs also, are manufactured, I mean, it's a worldwide operation. There's, you know, US companies and Taiwanese companies and uh, Germany. It's, it's a worldwide operation for AMD to make Zen 2. At least with these Hygon CPUs, there's the promise that, you know, China can make them all domestically. So I get it. I mean, it makes sense, especially with the whole tariffs and the trade wars and this kind of thing. And this server, if it weren't for these CPUs, would be completely indistinguishable from pretty much any other normal, industry standard to you rack mount server. All the parts are interchangeable. The BIOS, the UEFI, the network card, I mean, it's Intel Nix, A-Speed, UEFI. I mean, this is bog standard. There's not really anything special here except for the CPUs themselves. In terms of build quality, uh, it does leave a little bit to be desired there. I mean, the case has quite a lot of flex in it. The front USB and VGA ports really don't work all that well. If I were re reviewing this server, I would expect it to be a super cost down server. But the reality is that Sugon that makes this, I mean, they are a world contender. They, they really are just incredible. <laughs> now, plugging these into the network. Now, I, I didn't take any chances there. I recorded literally every packet in and out of these things on a completely separate network. An unnamed security researcher took a look at all of the traffic out of this. And as soon as I plugged Hygon Gen into the network. Oh, there was a lot of traffic to China. But we figured out that was actually the IPMI. The IPMI had been configured to check a Chinese server for updates. So once I disabled that, I didn't see any other traffic going from the IPMI interface out to a Chinese IP address. So make of that what you will. Now, of course, I have Linux benchmarks thanks to the Pharonix test suite. And you can see the full output of the supported instruction sets and all that from the Linux testing that I did on this. You can also check out Dr. Cutress's article on this platform. He did a bunch of other stuff, everything from Cinebench to, you know, his little instruction set performance thing, seeing how long different instructions set. I mean, it's possible and likely even that the bits of the chip, you know, the Zen architecture that may have been backdoored by the NSA have been removed by the Chinese and, you know, by the you know, replaced with new intellectual property that may or may not have been backdoored by China, things that are popular in China. But, uh, you know, I don't know. For us plebs, the folks that are perhaps maybe a bit security conscious, well, it's a, a little bit like when Batman, that's the US, and Iron Man, that's China, they're sort of throwing money at one another and spider Man sort of down below picking up, you know, whatever they picked up. It's like that, except instead of money, it's security. And we, the plebs, can sort of get an idea for how our hardware has been compromised by the intelligence services by looking at, at what the intelligence services from other countries are arguing about. This, this project has been an utterly fascinating project. And again, big thanks to Dr. Ian Cutrus because 
this is just awesome stuff. Also, Linus did a tech quickie on this, so you can check that out, and maybe we can uh, do some additional content on, on these servers and that kind of thing. I'm Wendell, this is level one, and this video totally would have been impossible without the very generous support from our patrons on Patreon and Floatplane. Yeah, we're on Floatplane now, so thank you all, seriously, genuinely, and anonymous benefactor who made this possible, especially thank you. So I'm signing out and I'll see you later because uh, now is the time to mess with the forbidden technology. Who knows, maybe the US State Department will let bygones be highgones and all will be forgiven. Give me MGM, I've got an idea for a screenplay.